What is this? The tie back's upside down. I thought it was in Russian, right in. One of the biggest issues is you get this kind of slipping and sliding. Pay attention, Brian. A lot of people were asking me about the stair gauges I use when I'm marking out my stringers. Now, if you look at this typical stair gauge or stair jack or stair dog or stair jig or whatever you call this, it's just a brass nut with a little threaded wheel. And you put that on your stringer here or on your uh, framing square, no problem. The issue is, you've got a very small amount of surface to actually catch the wood. And with pressure treated lumber, it's all over the place. So one of the biggest issues is you get this kind of slipping and sliding. So what these guys have done, they've invented the most obvious in hindsight invention ever, which are always the best ones where they just made a regular stair gauge bigger. So now you put it on your framing square and look at that. It's gonna grab because it's got that's why they're better. I think they're great. Another thing is you can put them on your regular speed square if you're cutting rafters or like this, put them upside down, put them right side up. It doesn't matter, whatever you're doing, you catch your angle that way. You can also put them on the shoe plate of your circular saw. Like these, I lose all the time. These I have not lost once since I got my first pair. I have every single pair I've ever gotten. These, I used to have to buy every time I built stairs, so. You ready? Pay attention, Brian. The deck's almost finished. If you're wondering why it's black, I have to say it's not steel, and it looks like composite or composite because it is. Check this out. This is Owens Corning Lumber. Uh, this is a high-density polyethylene and fiberglass with this fiberglass tape that surrounds it to give it that structural rigidity. We're framing the entire structure out of these three and one eighth inch framing screws. And uh, look at this. 24 inches on center for our joists. I know that Typically, composite decking gets 12 inches on center because most of it is garbage. We're using Owens Corning wear deck decking, and that allows us to go, because of the fiberglass structural integrity that it has, 24 inches on center, which means we're using less material and we're framing faster, which means we can invest those savings into a better frame. So check this out. We got a uh, four by eight beam here, lying in the mud like a filthy pig. And the beauty of it is it won't harm it at all because this is rated for ground contact, unlike wood, which you'd have to surround in butyl tape and just pray that no moisture ever gets in there to rot it out. This, you could throw it right on the dirt, it's ready to go. Um, another beauty is you don't have to worry about waning, you don't have to worry about crowning, you don't have to worry about size variation with the stuff. It's, it's awesome. Pay attention, Brian, I got a pro tip for you. My two corners, perfectly nailed in, right flush with the, with the rim joist. This one's off by about a quarter inch, so, we can steer it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why don't you just hammer a cat's paw or a chisel? Pry it this way, okay? We'd do that, but we'd pierce the joist tape, so that would be kind of stupid. Or wh where's your camo lever or your bow wrench? I'm at my house on a weekend and all my stuff is on site. So, we're gonna do this the old school way. We grab a piece of wood, two by four, put it in a bit of an angle, pop a nail in it. Maybe two for good measure. Get your board ready to screw. This is our first board, it's gotta be perfect. Make sure you're ready. Now, right before your eyes, you are going to see this gap close and this thing become something we can screw with. You ready? One, two, three. That's it. Let's pop it off and make sure you leave it nails up so your camera guy steps on it later. Hey, your drill. Thanks, bud. 
Pay attention, Brian. Today we're going to find out how easy it is to slide down a deck when it's wet. So, this is a uh, you, you know your bargain brand uh, scalloped composite decking, and I'm going to see if it's slippery or not. I'm going to need more water for that one. That is very slippery. No, so okay, ready? Okay, so clearly it's slippery, and it wouldn't make a very good ramp on a dock, but. The uh, decorators is boasting that you can't slide down this deck very easy, even when it's lubed up. So we'll give it a shot. Oh, that's actually amazing. <laughs> Look at that. And these are just my regular shoes. That's amazing. Pay attention, Brian. Today we have a veneer stone that you can put in with a brad nailer. I'm not joking, and no, it's not a sponge or a piece of plastic or foam. It actually feels like stone, but it's light as a feather. So, like this. Stainless steel, 16 gauge brad nail goes in. And this is something you could train a monkey to do and pay him in bananas to make sure that you scale that wall. Pay attention, Brian. I want to show you something. You have this on a job site? You crazy? Jeez, so we can step on it. in the ocean oh yeah pay attention Brian look at this this is what happens when you don't use sauna tubes after you've dug a hole for a fence post and left for the weekend before a giant storm look but some guy thought it'd be funny to leave the shovel in there now imagine the sand just freezes now and it just drops below like minus five and then this is just now permanent you need a jackhammer to get this out but perhaps this is like a sword and stone stone situation where you know the gentle hand will get to go home early like whoever can pull this thing out can leave for the day so i'm gonna go first since i won't look until leave anyways oh. okay chuck help me we'll leave these guys oh, we'll i could those. probably do it because i'm pure of heart okay okay i'll give you a shot with the legs Here's I'm going home! <laughs> Some ocean in the ocean. Oh yeah. All right. Now See Brian, you later. Chuck's going home. I need you to finish digging that hole out properly. We'll set the post in the morning. Thanks. Let me take our blade. Make sure you're spinning in the right direction. And then we fit the diamond right on the diamond. It's so obvious, it has to be real. Look at that. Doesn't get any easier than that. And we throw this on. And we start spinning this guy. The opposite direction. I'm gonna hit the brake. Break down the saw, give it a good tighten. Pay attention, Brian. I'm gonna show you how to attach a ledger to a brick house. Okay, so this seems long, longer than what you're used to seeing, I get that. But if you think about it, the brick is at least three and a half inches. And then we got an air gap that's one and a half to two inches thick before the Tyvek. Then you have the OSB, then you have the actual rim joist. So we're going all the way in. 
All right, once the hole is drilled, you wanna take your screw. Technically, it's just a screw. You wanna take the sharp end, put the sharp end in the hole first. You wanna save this end to go inside the driver bit. It's on your impact wrench. And then you wanna put it in forward mode and go into the wood of the house. And you want it to bite. A bit like a red-headed stepchild on a short bus. And if you're like, where's the flashing? What the flash? Think about it. This is high density polyethylene. It's not going to rot. Behind the brick is an air gap. There's Tyvek there to drain. You see these little, these little cracks where they're missing the mortar? Those are weepers. The water is supposed to run down. So having a hole in the brick here isn't actually a big deal. So if you understand the anatomy of the house, you'll get it. And if you think I'm a moron, what I need you to do is find the closest reflective surface to you and look in that and there you will find the biggest moron you've ever met. Pay attention, Brian, look at this hammerhead. Uh, Kinetic Customs makes this, it's got that twist in it. Something about a, a hand forged custom hammerhead it's just so fancy, you can't not love it. We're gonna put a handle on it today. Take the, you'll notice the head of the hand, or the, the part where the head goes in has a slit, usually already in it. If not, you could cut one with a saw, it's rather simple. Put your hammerhead in there. Get that where you want it. Get your shim. Split the shim, it's a little big. All right, and then here's the age old question, which came first, the hammer or the hammer? I'm gonna use a hammer to install a hammer. You hammer that wedge in, that expands that real nice. Tightens that sucker right up. Oh baby. I could just leave it like that for that kind of rustic look. Or what I could do is cut this carefully with a saw and then hammer this ring in there. That turned out. All right, let's hammer this sucker in. Yeah, baby, look at that. I didn't nick the chrome at all. That's a good looking hammer right there. I come home upset, my wife's like, let me guess, Kyle? And I say, yeah, he pushed me in the dirt again today. And then she rubs my back. Pay attention, Brian, I'm gonna cut this thing. No chalk line, no measurements, no pencils, no track saw, just me and my worm drive skill saw by DeWalt. Check it out, baby. Ready? Boom! The carpenter's eye. Look how straight that is. That's right. Real men don't use track saws. Pay attention, Brian. I got a trick for you today. We're building a handrail on this porch, and these two pillars are not square to each other. They're Technically supposed to be 45, but let's be honest, we know they're not going to be. I'm gonna show you how to find the angle quickly and accurately. First, I need you to hold this right on the point there. Then we're gonna run this from point to point. Now this is a non-permanent chalk, so we can just rinse this off when we're done. A little trick here so we don't have blue chalk. You don't wanna use a permanent chalk on somebody's concrete porch. Put a straight edge against the surface you're going to mount to. Then take the pivot on your speed square, that's that little notch, and you're gonna line up where the blue chalk meets the yellow square right on the notch, and then you're gonna find your reading right here. So that's 45 plus two, 47 degrees exactly. That's our angle, we're gonna write that down and make sure we cut accordingly. Pay attention, Brian, I got a pro tip for you. Okay, so we're attaching this privacy screen. It's orange coin two by fours, Attaching it to our Owens Corning 6x6 frame. I want to drive one of these washer head structural screws right up inside, but with the regular <laughs> drill, our gaps are a little too tight to do that. So we're going to use this doohickey that gives us a nice little 90 degree access. 
But because this thing requires so much torque, we're gonna have to pre-drill first. I'm gonna put this pilot hole right there. Grab it with your hand, don't be scared of it. Try to get it nice and straight. And that'll determine the path so we can keep it straight. Now we'll throw our T40 on there and uh, let's send it home. Now don't think that this is the part where it's easy because this is not easy. All right, you gotta grip it nice and good so the torque doesn't kick. Nice. Beautiful. attention Brian it's finish day finally all right so check it out I don't know if you remember what this thing looked like before hopefully I have footage and we'll cut to that now so you can see it right, so we got the fence here this is the new trend vinyl fence see how we put that gray stripe in to add a little bit of contrast to everything the shed that we designed and built from scratch the OC lumber framed and wear deck deck same with the privacy screen back there is a mix of wear deck, ePay, and Owens Corning Lumber. If you're indecisive about whether or not you want a pergola or you want a gazebo, this will handle both at once. When we turn it into a pergola, it bends at our will. And if it's raining or the sun's directly above our heads, we just press a button and close it up.